Holy crap. Something just touched me. This entity knew I was going to make this video and it attacked me. It attacked me about three days in a row. So let's get into it. Alright guys, I put a poll up on my channel community tab to see what kind of content you wanted. And a lot of you said Foreman Brothers. <laughs> but what's funny is the video that I'm going to be reacting to, it's called Did We Just Catch an Incubus Demon on Video by Paranormal Nightmare. And I started taking notes on this video before I put the poll up and then for whatever reason, I guess because I was sick, I got busy, I like took a break and I never completed all my notes and so I finished them yesterday and it's been almost a month. <laughs> so you know what, I figured I'd just get this out of the way, get it going, and then maybe change it up a little bit in terms of what I'll be reacting to. But this this video is interesting, and I'll be putting in some clips of certain parts that I found interesting or anything I caught. And the real question is, is Mia actually experiencing an incubus demon? Now, personally, I've experienced an incubus demon. And so I have a little bit of experience when dealing with them. And I'm going to be honest, they're a pain in the butt to get rid of. Especially if there's traumas that they are just sinking their teeth into and grasping onto to continue to perpetuate the fear cycle and the oppression cycle. And so I wanted to know if she was actually dealing with an incubus demon because if they are not kicked out quick enough, they can be very detrimental on a person's mental and physical health. And of course, I don't want people to deal with what I dealt with. And so I wanted to give some information, maybe some tips and tricks to see if we can help Mia. Um, I know that the Foreman Brothers, they do their cleansing after every case, but sometimes, and it's nothing to do with if they're doing it right or wrong, sometimes you have an entity that is stubborn and it takes multiple times and I feel like this entity is one of them. And so I wanted to, yeah, let's get into this. Because there's a lot to unpack here. So the first thing that came to mind, that came in psychically before they even said anything in the video, was toxic and abusive marriage. Believe me, don't believe me, but they did confirm that later in the video. But the thing is with Mia, she's got a lot of trauma in those areas. And that feeling of longing to be loved properly, to feel love from another, attracted this male energy that is similar in frequency of those struggling emotions in trauma. Everybody wants to be loved properly, of course. And when you go through these traumas, it just makes those emotions stronger and that yearning stronger and unfortunately, there it tracks bad things. It does. And it's not the person's fault. They deserve to have love. However, unfortunately, negative entities take advantage. And it really sucks. And it's not cool. But entities, negative entities, don't care. They don't care about your feelings. They just want their 
yummy yummy goodness snack their energy source to continue to feed off and that's what happened here and in a minute and 50 seconds into the video Mia does state that she went to a psychiatrist to be evaluated which that's great that's one of the first things that a person should be doing anyway when they're experiencing a haunting or an attachment always go to the doctor because whether the entity may be causing it or it might be underlying issues or issues the person might already know about it's good to get them treated because negative entities can make them worse point blank I'm a great example of that I have chronic illnesses of the yin-yang and one way that I am attacked is through them and my weakest point is my stomach because I've had a lot of health issues regarding my stomach and because that is my weak point that is where I get attacked and similar to Mia wherever her weak point is they're going to attack so it's always good to try to strengthen those points and just make sure too that you can rule any mental health stuff out so you know for a fact that it is um, an entity or a spirit, especially if you don't have a medium to tell you. So that's great. Two minutes in, she, she starts talking about how she stopped sleeping in the bed and moved to the couch. And that hit home for me because when I went through my haunting with an incubus entity, that is one of the first things I did. And that has to do with being constantly violated and not feeling safe in your own bed. So what are you going to do? You're going to go somewhere where those traumas, those emotions, those experiences aren't. And the couch is a great place because you don't have those awful memories or nightmares there. However, while it only works for a little bit, sometimes it doesn't work at all, but in my case, it worked, I would say, it helped tremendously, but not to the point where it got rid of the issue. And it only lasted probably two weeks, but to get sleep, I didn't care. Like, I was willing to do anything to get sleep. Of course, I didn't take any kind of drugs to do that because that's just my own prerogative. But some people, they fall on to medications that help them sleep and maybe help them not dream so they don't have to live those experiences. But something about sleeping on a couch feels safer, less intimate, and just less room for anything to try to fit there to attack. But unfortunately, that's kind of not how they attack. When you get attacked and you get sleep paralysis or you're having SA experiences, let's say this is you sleeping wherever. The entity can come from the top and from the bottom, of course from the sides, but a lot of times they do the top and the bottom. It sucks. But sleeping on the couch may help you mentally, but in the long run, it's not going to 100% stop the entity from attacking you and giving you nightmares and all this crappy stuff. Plus, if a person is a victim or was a victim of SA or any kind of traumas, a bed is or could be a painful reminder of that, which of course is ammunition for the entity to use. Additionally, the bedroom is supposed to be an intimate, safe space, and the entity knows by invading that space is very unnerving and makes you feel like you don't have a safe and private space to return to. Negative entities want to make you feel as unprotected and vulnerable to make you feel as uncomfortable as possible. It aids them in their fear tactics. It's terrible. I haven't slept good in two years. I haven't slept through the night in two years. And I heard this laughter. It sounded like a child. It was so clear. It sounded like it was um, something like 
record it. Like it, it was, was like, from, like a cartoon. I called 911. I was so scared. I wanted to believe that someone was in there. I did not want to believe it was paranormal, even though everything was happening. And they came in and, and they, I said, in the closet, in the closet, in the closet. The one guy opened up the closet door and there was nothing. 240. Of course I go, that's not a child. Most of the time, it's not a child. Sometimes it can be residual energy of children. However, in this case, no. <laughs> nope. It's just another tactic to unsettle her, but to also mimic a child to give the illusion that the entity is harmless. I hate that. I hate that. And I feel like she knows that as well. Like, it's not a child, and that freaks her out even more. I learned everything I could about the paranormal, everything I could consume. I started getting really depressed. Suicidal thoughts. Then the banging started. And it always starts in the laundry room. That's all was going on was just the banging every night. I called you guys because things started getting uh, physical. My bed stands started shaking at night. Bed shakes. It got real violently shaking like. I want to leave me alone. I have terrible, terrible dreams. Very, very perverted dreams. I woke up with bruises on my inner thighs. I mean, just disgusting. Like, woke up with bruises on my inner thighs and they look like fingerprints. Shakes the bed. So there's a plan, whatever it has for me. And it's been causing havoc and destruction. I mean, I got in a car accident just last week. Since I've been here, I've been sick a lot. I've talked to some paranormal people about this. Um, they were the ones there that just came and see if you have paranormal, but they don't do the cleaning, the cleansing. And I raised my voice. And when I raised my voice, we heard a BAM! 315. The negative thoughts have to do with the entity trying to wear her down. It's another common tactic that is used to create more negative energy to feed off of and to potentially influence and or and or possess her when you're somebody struggling whether it's depression what have you <sighs> yeah it's easier for them to get in it's like another hole in the barrier but it's in your mind barrier or in your mind and when you have really stubborn and negative descended entities, yeah, the mind is just one of those most common places or areas for things to attack. I notice that the very like conniving, the very smart entities know how to go for the mind and how to manipulate a person and I feel like she might be aware of it, but that's another reason why it's good to go to therapy because whether it's you or the entity or both doing things in your brain, at least there is a mental health professional that can help you maneuver around negative thoughts to bring you out of those patterns. 3 minutes, 50 seconds. Terrible, gruesome, and perverted dreams in addition to bruises on her inner thighs. This entity is definitely essaying her as another form of feeding from her energy. Incubus, and even spiritual spouses, negative entities of the human variety, they can do all of these things. It doesn't necessarily have to be a demonic entity that attacks in this way. Sometimes you just have human spirits that were so, like, lustful when they're alive and it kind of translates to when they're dead. And, yes, they take it too far. And I, I have a lot of experience when dealing with that because it happened to me almost every single night. Every night. To where, like... It would wear me down so hard because I would be so tired. I'd keep waking up and waking up distressed. And you know, when you wake up and your heart is pounding and you're stressed out, it's hard to go back to sleep afterwards, especially a nightmare. And I feel like for her that she would go into her sleep, have her 
nightmares or astral attacks or spirit spiritual attacks and when she would wake up and go back to sleep they continue when you have things that continue after you wake up a lot of times I would say about 90% of the times those are astral or psychic attacks because when you wake up it pretty much interferes with your REM sleep patterns and typically they say it takes between 60 to 90 minutes for a person to go into REM sleep though if you have any sleeping issues it could be like 30 minutes sometimes even less but when you wake up and you interrupt that sleep cycle it has to start all over again and so for it to pick back up, it ain't natural. Let me just say that. And that used to happen to me as well. I would be sleeping, I'd wake up from an attack, and sometimes I would see the entity, of course. Sometimes you can wake up and be in full sleep paralysis. I feel like she's had that too. Um, and I would go back to sleep and it would just continue. And I'd be like, what the hell? Like waking up is supposed to stop that. Not in this case. Accidents to illnesses are another form of oppression to convince the person that they have no control of their lives to further pretty much convince them. And it, it's another technique to put them in negative thought patterns. A lot of times when a lot of bad stuff happens back to back to back to back, a person can be like, oh my God, I'm cursed, which is understandable. Or it's just... If they know that there's an entity or spirit involved, it just kind of further puts them more in a fear state. And around this time, I also start to suspect that she may have other health issues regarding organs in the pelvic area. Those who suffer from more physical and SA hauntings tend to suffer from these types of illnesses that involve like the uterus, ovaries, bladder, kidneys liver intestines, anything from your belly button down to like your tailbone, typically. Why is that? Now this is just a theory, so if anyone has gone through this and can validate some of what I'm saying, it would be interesting to hear what you have to say. But from my own point of view, from some of the clients that I've talked to, they have one of these issues and I feel like it has to do with the residual energy especially from the SA that's going on sitting in those areas and causing illness in the body if you guys have any other theories let me know because I'm very curious um, but this is just a pattern that I picked up but look at me I've had the incubus thing go on um, I have interstitial cystitis, which is inflammation of the bladder, and I have tiny little pinholes in the bladder, and it hurts like a bitch. And I am um, forever on medication because it's something that I have to deal with for the rest of my life. Endometriosis. Now I could chalk that up and say it was more, um, that could be genetics because I have some family members with that. Okay, I also have ovary issues, though I am being gaslighted by doctors about it. Um, I do have left ovary issues and I do have a liver issue and of course intestinal issues as you all know. And again, that's a weak point, but the entity does make it worse. So while I've already had that and it's something that occurs naturally in my body the entities do make it worse but I'm just throwing that out there in case there are people that are going through similar situations and also have these issues these health issues for her something feels off around the left side of the pelvic area maybe kidney or ovary I did notice while I was watching this video that those points of interest were hurting a lot a lot so I'm wondering if she's experiencing those issues I do want to point out the root sacral and solar plexus chakras are 
muddied with negative energy for her. The heart chakra is blocked from the trauma she has endured. And I feel like with the situation she's gone through, it's giving it, it's giving her a difficult time to trust other people. Spirit is showing me that the person needs to see a mental health professional to help her rewire her brain, which I can't remember if she said she's still seeing, but if she's not still seeing, I highly recommend her to go back. And even naturally, people's brain chemistry sometimes get out of funk. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It happens. And, you know, there could be environmental factors, there could be um, internal factors, what have you. And I know mental health in today's society is very looked down upon, but it's starting to be more widely accepted. But I noticed in the older generation, I would say about 40s and older, they're still very standoffish about it. And that's just how they were raised. But I think it's important to be more accepting and understanding even of themselves. There's, they need to know that there's nothing to be ashamed of. And sometimes we need a little extra help from a mental health professional. But for her to get her out of those patterns of negative thinking, whether it's her, the entity or both, again, she needs that to be done. She's been in a toxic marriage for too long and needs to relearn what it's like to love herself properly and to properly take care of herself mentally and physically and what a healthy relationship looks like. She needs to unlearn the behavior she learned from adapting to a narcissistic person. Otherwise, those things will be brought into a new relationship but also stick around as a form of PTSD and negative energies that she's holding on to. This demon looked like the devil himself, all red, horns, huge muscles, was on top of me. I opened up my eyes and he was smiling and he was on top of me, but I felt the most pleasure that I've ever felt. I had felt this amazing feeling I've never felt before. And I remember like smiling and like closing my eyes and then I told that lady that, and she said that it was an incubus. After that happened, I had an out-of-body experience where I was floating over my body. I could see myself laying there. It sucks because I don't know what's gonna happen from night to night. Like, I don't know. I go to bed every night scared. Even if I move from here, I'm gonna have the same problem. I've seen it. It's like black smoke. It's like a mist sitting on the couch and she was sitting next to me and at the same time we both went like this and looked over into the kitchen she goes did you hear that and I said did you see that so I saw it and she heard it and it went whoop, and it went right around our kitchen table very very fast and it was like this this tall this time it manifested as um, almost a shape of a child but it was pure black it was right behind you Josh and it went right it just it appeared i didn't see it like run from here to here it just like appeared right there it went, whoop, it went right into her room but it bangs every night here every night 450 she talks about how the demon looked like the devil himself red horns huge muscles provided sexual gratification black smoke form appears as a child sometimes which is her description so she is aware that it is looking or trying to appear like a child to unsettle her the problem is when you have really descended beings, whether they're human or non-human, they can shapeshift. Not all of them, but a lot of them can. And for her, if she believes the stereotypical demon to appear in this way and that scares her, of course the entity is going to appear in that way. Again, happened to me. I was at the beginning of my journey, my spiritual psychic journey. And it would appear as things that scared the shit out of me. Not gonna lie. And what I thought a demon 
would look like it appeared as. Now, obviously, knowing now, demons come in various shapes, sizes, handsome, not handsome. They can look like a normal person. They can, they can look however they want, essentially. They can look like a bird. They can look like a cat. Whatever they want. And so when you're in this field trying to identify entities, while what the person says is important, it's very, very important that you don't let it sway you in any direction because like I said, they can shapeshift. And it can convince you it to be one thing to make it easier for them to A, hide, but harder for you to cleanse out and kick out. So that's why it's important to not let certain information the client tells you sway you. Because remember, the entity is doing things to scare the crap out of the client. Point blank. But it's important to take note of her experiences because you can still pick out patterns in the way that these entities oppress their targets. 525, astral projecting while she sleeps, potential psychic abilities. This is something I learned myself. I have a knack for astral projection, whether it's intentional or not intentional, no matter what. When my eyes are closed, bam, I'm astral projecting. I can't control it. It just happens. And when you're somebody like that, it leaves you vulnerable because you don't know what's going on. You don't know how to control it. And it makes it easier for things to attack you, especially on the astral realm. And they can attack your astral body. And I feel like a lot of these attacks are on the astral realm. And some of these attacks, I feel like they're purposely pulling her out of her body. So it's, I also notice this pattern too, just with myself and some other clients, that if an entity continuously pulls you out of your body and attacks you on the astral realm, it might force you to learn how to astral project and get to a point where you just do it. You don't want that, obviously, but some people might be, ooh, don't get any ideas, that's not good. But in my case, while in my astrology I do have a knack for it, the haunting I experienced pretty much made me learn it faster than maybe I should have learned it and didn't let me learn it at my own speed. It kind of forced me into learning it and I feel like that might be her case. It does mimic her daughter, which Oh, I hate that. I hate that. But again, it's to unsettle her. But I did pick up some remnants of residual energy, but most of the time, it's the entity mimicking her daughter. There's more of that than the actual residual energy. Into the investigation. I start feeling heart palpitations and bladder pain. So I feel like, again, this entity is poking and prodding those areas for her. High stress and anxiety, obviously, it doesn't take a psychic medium to figure that out. You can just tell by looking at her, but yeah, there's a lot of stress and anxiety going on. I do notice that the entity may be influencing bad decisions. It's, it's at that beginning stage to test what amount of strength it or control it holds over her. And that's where some of these bad decisions are coming in to see what it can get her to do. Luckily, luckily, the Foreman brothers came in at a good time before the influence could get worse to possession. So they did get there in a good amount of time in the perfect time to stop that from happening. 
If you're in here, give me a sign. What the heck was that? Hello? I got a device. You can talk to me. Would you like to communicate with me? It's not for you. What's well, not for me? Floor. Or about the floor. 1026. When Sean is on the bed trying to talk to it through the spirit box app, I can feel it draining his energy. I'm, I don't see the entity at that moment, but I can feel my energy going. And I'm just like, rut row. And I've said this in multiple videos, but I also want to throw this out again as a reminder important note about spirit boxes of any variety if a spirit or spirits know they have an opportunity to communicate with the living they will so therefore any spirit that is around the vicinity will most likely come forward and just because they come forward doesn't mean they have to be in the same location as person with spirit box just you know just a little in case you didn't know but from the this clip, it looks like Sean is getting bits and pieces from a multitude of spirits hanging around, which makes it a bit confusing when trying to piece together the footage. The spirit box did tr attract some things to communicate with him, but I don't think they're the main things haunting Mia. I don't think they're the main attachment. There might be one that lingers around, occasionally but they're not the main source of the issues i feel like the brothers had a slightly difficult time trying to piece together the narrative of the spirits they were talking to because there's a bunch of them coming through sometimes it sounds like one but i i'm pretty sure it's not one it's multiple I just heard a man say, yeah. Did you just talk to me? I have to go back and listen. I swear I heard a man say, yeah. Hello? And see, that's the good thing about having the three of us is we can come in individually. You have three different personalities, three different energy types, and hopefully between the three of us, it'll spark something to happen. 16 minutes in. The problem investigators often run into is when the person with the attachment leaves the vicinity or the area where the investigation is taking place Oftentimes, there's not much activity to be captured. Yeah, they'll catch things here and there on the spirit box devices due to what I said earlier, but the main activity went with the person it's attracted to, and that is the case here. Like I said, I do believe there is something lingering around, but it's not the main source of her problems, and I do do think it is very negative, but it's not the main source. In situations like this, it is advised that they investigate partially with the person gone, of course, and partially with the person there. But even then, if you have a very smart entity, they might make themselves scarce. 
Why? Because they don't want to be caught. I'm sure debunkers would have a field day with this method, but that's how attachments work most of the time. A lot of debunkers don't know how spirits and attachments and hauntings work. It's easy for them to say, oh, well, you know, if it was real, this and this would happen. Well, a lot of times the entities don't want people to think they're actually there. They want to make their target look like they're crazy. 17 minutes in, there is an earthy around that was drawn to the negative energy produced from Mia's emotions in vibration, but also the haunting itself. So this is the one that's lingering around, like I stated previously. Many times when there's a haunting or bad attachment, the energy produced by the spirit or entity themselves and or from the oppression or actions, etc., can produce a type of energy that draws in more negative entities and spirits, especially if there is a vibratory match. So let me lay it out here. Alleged incubus entity, regardless of whether it's an incubus or not, it's descended and it's nasty and it sucks and it's attacking the client or I should say their target, whatever you want to call Mia. As it's oppressing her, she's releasing negative emotions, negative energy, but also the negative energy from the entity attacking her is also being released. Okay, then you see other entities or beings like, oh, this is food for me too, and they just come in. It's like when someone's bleeding in the ocean, it alerts the sharks because they, I don't know, to them it's prey. Same thing for the most part. No way. Okay, now that I know you're in here. Dude, something just touched my face too. Dude, that thing is going freaking crazy. During the interview, you were knocking on stuff. Back in that laundry room. I want you to come out here with me right now. We are here to help Mia. To communicate with you, find out why you're here and what you want. Are you a demon? Are you human spirit? Do you know that you're dead? Nineteen minutes in, Josh is sitting at the table and something touched his face. Now this energy feels feminine, middle ageish female with long grayish hair, elbow length. And there's multiple spirits there, one female, one male at this specific time. Some of them are just crossing, or not crossing, but passing through. Because again, there's people looking for spirit activity. So when you go looking for things, things will find you. Oh, my GoPro went dead. What are you guilty of? I cannot explain how cold it is inside this. Oh, it's going off. Got super cold and now the alarm's going off. Where did you come from? My ears are ringing. River. Alarm's going off again. If you have the energy to hurt Mia, Jeffrey. who is Jeffrey? Were you murdered? Eric. I think it said Eric earlier. If it said Eric earlier, I'll have to go back. That'd be twice that it said Eric. 
Eric, what do you want with Mia? Twenty-four minutes thirty-six seconds in, camera goes dead. Josh states how cold it is, and then his arm goes, and then his alarm goes off. Perfect example of the spirits sucking up as much energy as they can. This clip is perfect because it happens in short phases. So, camera goes dead. It sucks out the energy. And because of that, it's still sucking out the energy, which puts a little void in the space around him, which, which is why the air gets cold. And because this phenomenon is happening, there is still an energetic signature, electromagnetic signature, and the alarm picks it all up and then goes off. 25 minutes in. The device keeps saying, Eric, but the spirit still seems like a female, at least the one communicating with him. But again, there is a male and a female at this time. So, could be Eric. Could be. I'm bad with names, so I can't really validate names, per se. Holy crap. Something just touched me. Holy crap. Something just touched me. You cannot touch me. Especially don't touch me there. Dude, it felt like something touched me like right Dare. here. Dare. You're a sick pervert. Dude, it was like straight on pressure, my inner thigh. Watch up here. I want to see you. Who is outside these doors looking in, watching me? 29 minutes, 48 seconds. The thing that touched him was a male energy and watching this video has been making my eyes burn bad and when i came to film my eyes are still burning i had to turn my light off for a little bit and like close my eyes and let the burning sensation like fade away and it's coming back so yeah 33 minutes in it's definitely trying to zap the energy from the batteries however it's not a viable energy source for spirits and entities they need energy from the living there when it comes to electronics and the living there's two different types of energies you have mechanical and then the psychic kinetic and there's quite a few other ones but specifically they need energy from the living they don't really do much with mechanical energy it's like a quick think of it as taking a five hour energy drink except it doesn't last five hours it lasts minutes if that whereas a human's energy it sustains longer periods of time there is an extremely descended male earthy there He's the one that's in the window and touched Josh and one of the most active ones in the house. So, yeah, that one is the one that is part of the issue that's eaten the negative energy that the main negative entity is putting out and what Mia's putting out. He's one of the main active ones. This one has been dead for a good while now. It also seems like he's trying to derail the investigation by providing false information and does things to scare them. He definitely is doing a lot of the paranormal activity in the house and messing with Mia and her child. He is giving shapeshifter vibes as well and he's giving them nightmares. Uh, when it comes to incubus or incubus-like entities, depending on the spirit or entity type 
sometimes depends on the activity going around. I feel like that while initially this male descended entity was separate, it is now working together with the incubus entity. 5045, she won't leave. There is two. Two main issues. Interesting that they say she, though. I did get an image of a woman, and I will show you that picture here. Um, there is a portal in the bedroom, and who he's talking to isn't the main entity. 5109, glad they investigated with her there. And as she's lying in the bed, I do see a black shadow above her. So she's laying in the bed, and the entity's like this. <sighs> yeah, we're gonna... Maybe she'll see this video. If she does, great, because I want to give her some tips on how to help her sleep and have some peace of mind and not be attacked. So more channeled information. The thing that Shauna has been talking to around 46 to 47 minutes in is not the same thing that's attacking Mia. Again, my opinion. What Shauna is talking to is the male earthy. What's attacking Mia is with her because it's attached to her. So they're not gonna get much from that specific entity since it's attached to her. It went with her. There's a portal in the bedroom and some around the area. And when I say area, I mean like the land that her property is situated on. It's not all on her property, but there is some specific areas where there are portals and that brings in stuff. And because she has a portal in her bedroom, that could also explain why when they're on the spirit boxes, they're getting a crap ton of earthy interference. They're coming in through that portal and that's how they're like communicating with them. And some of them, of course, don't need to come through the portal to communicate. They could just communicate. But that would explain why I'm picking up so many and why that area is kind of like a high traffic area for things to go in and out. Solar plexus attachment. So there is a solar plexus attachment where it does mess with her. I feel like that might be the main entity. And of course, you can have attachments in multiple chakras from the same entity, but I feel like there's one in her solar plexus and one in her heart chakra. I feel like the heart chakra might be more of the earthy that I was mentioning before, and then the pelvic or what you calls its solar plexus is like the one that's essaying her. Um, I do feel pelvic pain, burning. The entity is causing more issues in or around the pelvic floor area. If she doesn't have IC over your uterus issues, I will be super surprised. Of course, I don't wish that upon anybody, but I'm just saying if she doesn't have those issues, I'm going to be really surprised. She may have had these issues already, but the spirit and or entity is or are making it worse. Note. When I started looking at this case to react to, literally the same day, the same day, I got a new client experiencing the same exact issues. Before I could continue working on this video, oh yeah, that's right. The reason why it's been a month since I started and now finishing up is because of this client and it's not her fault. The client is more important to focus on, videos can wait. The person that's having the issue and that I'm working with comes first always and so that's part of the reason too why I'll, why I wanted to like take a little break because I didn't want any interference from Mia's stuff that's going on versus my client because then it could get hard to tell who's experiencing what issues from which entity it can become a clusterfuck and very confusing and yeah so I think that's why I did take that break. The entity I am seeing is male presenting, shows itself as a shadow man, 
but it's not a true shadow person. Very shapeshifty, descended human spirit who is driven by lust. There are ascended beings there helping Mia, though. And it's key. And I. Okay, so the reason I was seeing. The reason why I'm saying this is when I was doing my meditation, I kept seeing a sword and then I kept seeing a cross. And when I see like swords and crosses, I think of Archangel Michael like taking out some negative entities. And I feel that and I see it. I see them doing that. And randomly I just started seeing a train. I don't know what that means. Maybe someone might know while watching this. But yeah. So the question is, the entity, the main one that's attacking Mia, is it a true incubus demon? I would say it's complicated because depending on the culture or religion or what have you a person's from, they may consider an incubus to be different things. And the entity in question is a shapeshifter. It is highly, highly descended. I feel like at one time it used to be human, but it's so far descended that I don't know if you could even call it a human anymore. And so personally, I don't think it is a true incubus demon or entity. But I do know that negative human earthbound spirits can become so descended that they can turn into these kinds of things. And I feel like it's more along those realms. So is it a true incubus demon? Not quite, but it is very incubus like. If that makes sense. I don't know. Does that make sense? And then the human earthbound, descended earthbound spirit that's now working with it. So there is two main problems in the portal in the bedroom that need to be addressed. And she's got so much trauma to work through that until she does that, even if the Foreman Brothers cleansing is successful... It's only probably going to last for so long. I think it put the entities at a distance from her. So she's not in dangers of being possessed because they did their thing with the holy water. But again, the traumas and all that stuff until she heals from them are going to inch them closer back to her. And that sucks. But that's why I make the content that I do to educate and to show how these things work to prevent issues like possession or attachments or at least to help get rid of these things. So hopefully that answers that question. Now, if you are experiencing an attachment or a haunting and you're being essayed in your dreams or astrally, what have you, there are some things you can do to stop that. Whether it's temporary or not temporary, each case is different, so some things may work permanently, some things may work occasionally, some things might not work at all. I'm learning the number one thing that helps, and I recommend this to all my clients because it's had a very high success rate, and you can buy this on Amazon for like $9. Holy oil. Get yourself some holy oil, please. If you're getting attacked, put it on all your chakras, especially before bed, especially if you're getting attacked every night, put that shit on all your chakras and make sure you don't just do the one side of your body, but you do the other side too. So that's very important. And I noticed with the client that I was helping that had the same situation, holy oil has been a game changer for her. I'm so happy because I don't wish this upon anyone. It's terrible. Other things you can do. Get some black tourmaline. Obviously this is agate, but pretend it's black tourmaline. Get yourself a black tourmaline necklace. Make sure you have like, I would get two so you can rotate them, but get two. 
They don't have to be expensive. They don't have to be fancy. You can literally make your own. Just get a chunk of black tourmaline from Etsy or wherever. Wrap some wire on it. Doesn't matter what kind. And put it around your neck. And then your bed. Make sure you have a nice chunk of that under your mattress. And again, get multiple so you can switch it out. Because don't, don't forget, you have to charge them. You have to cleanse them periodically. You can do it at the full moon. You can bury them in the dirt. You can... Um, use smoke there's a bunch of ways you can literally google how to cleanse and charge your stones um but that's what i recommend because you want to protect the top of your body and below your body because again like i said they can come from the top and they can come from the bottom of course your sides if you have like a nightstand or a little table by your bed you can put one there you can make a little barrier with those stones it works you just gotta pay attention, make sure they're charged and cleansed, and do it regularly. I would say you could probably do it monthly, but each case is different, like I said. Um, try it out if a week gets you going and then you're noticing like you're having issues after a week, that's when you need to cleanse your things, charge them up, rotate, and have your fresh set ready so you can repeat. Um, of course, Palo Santo helps, but I'm noticing Copal and Frankincense together are really good for really stubborn and strong things. When I did my cleansings during my haunting, Sage didn't do jack shit. It did nothing. Palo Santo, I added Palo Santo and I even did Dragon's Blood. That wasn't enough either. Because when you're dealing with incubus, again, incubus are a type of demon, and the regular stuff ain't gonna cut it. Sometimes it can, but a lot of times it ain't gonna cut it. And you gotta bump up your stuff. So I recommend your Copal and Frankincense. You can throw in a little myrrh if you want to. Palo Santo, you can always use too, like together with all those things. So you can do all those. Make sure you do your entire house, not just your room. I have a video where you can watch how I do it. It's pretty much me explaining how to cleanse your space. Well, I'm actually doing it, so it's easier for you to follow. Watch that. It'll help you. Um, learning your psychic protections and making barriers, visualization practices and techniques are good with meditation. There are so many things that can be done. The ones that I just mentioned, I would say are the most effective. I would recommend doing that. Of course, you need to give your guides and your angels permission to take away things. So you have to be adamant at wanting things kicked out and not attached anymore. So always, before you do anything, give your guides and angels permission simple as that because law of free will they obey that so they want to make sure you know you want it taken care of so uh yeah i'm gonna leave it here guys so if you guys have any questions comments concerns leave them down below um i also want to state this i'm noticing youtube is deleting comments i don't delete comments unless there's racism, of course. If there's anything that can harm, hurt mentally, physically, another person, it I will delete it personally. If you make fun of me, I don't give a flying fuck. My daddy didn't raise no bitch. <laughs> I mean, I've been bullied since a child. I'm used to it. It don't bother me. So for those who, you know, trying to be nasty in the comments towards me, I don't give a fuck. If it makes you feel better, obviously don't do it. But if it makes you feel better, I don't give a fuck. Um, but if your shit gets deleted, it's YouTube. It's not me. So, uh, yes. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys soon. And peace out.
Thank you.